Sri Vishnu Sahasranama, name 859 is Suparna. This name already came up at name 194. Analysis of the Sanskrit roots from which the name is derived. Well, Su is well known, is very nice, beautiful, good. Parna, uh, Sri Satyadeva Vashishta analyzes that it means to finish, to get through or over, and another meaning is to make green. So in this way, parna means wing, that which takes us or takes the bird over is the derivation. And parna means leaf. Uh, this name Suparna is the name of Vishnu. There's also a fairly well-known name of Parvati, Aparna, means no leaves. It means she didn't even eat any leaves when she was undertaking austerities. So this name can mean uh, one who has beautiful wings, to uh, one who enables the jivas to cross over the ocean of material existence, one who gives everyone and everything the ability to move around, one who makes everything live, and especially the uh, flora, or not all the flora, most, much of it to be green, and one who is decorated with tulsi leaves. One who has beautiful wings, Parasha Bhatta hasn't directly given this, but sub-commentators have taken his interpretation to mean that uh, he just, who has beautiful wings. So this means Hamsa, Hamsa Avatar, and even in reference to Garuda, because the Antaryami of Garuda, the indwelling super soul of Garuda, uh, who Lord Krishna accepts as his carrier, is Garuda. So he rides on the one who is Suparna, who has beautiful wings. In Bhagavad Gita, uh, Lord Krishna says, Vaina te pakshinam, among all the birds, I am Garuda. So in that sense, can be said to be directly, although the Vibhuti is mentioned in the 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, from which this is from, they are not, not exactly direct representations. They are manifestations of the Supreme Lord's opulence. Similarly, in the 11th canto of Bhagavad Gita, Sorry, uh, 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, we find Lord Krishna telling Uddhava, Suparno ham patatrinam, among the birds, I am the one with beautiful wings or great wings or powerful wings, which is understood to refer to Garuda. <clears throat> one of these wings is the Vedas that show the path how we should behave in this world and what is the absolute truth. Uh, previously, I cited Srila Prabhupada's description from the third canto of Bhagavatam, how the, vib the flapping of Garuda's wings automatically produces the sounds of the Sama Veda. The other wing of... Uh, uh -huh, no, I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit mixed up here. That's Garuda, yeah. And then uh, if, we, if we call Vishnu Suparna, which we're doing, as it's his name here in Vishnu Sahasranam, then Radha Krishna Shastra explains that one, we can say he's two-winged, in as much as one wing is the Vedas, and the other is the Sadacha, the proper behavior practiced by great devotees and acharyas. So in both ways, uh, Krishna manifests, manifests himself in the world to show us the right path. The word Suparna uh, occurs in a fairly well-known passage 
from Karto Panishad and Mundako Panishad, it appears in both of them, Satyadeva Vashishta uh, quotes that Dva Suparna Sayuja Sakaya Samanang Vriksham Praishas Vajate Tayor Anya Pipalang Svadyat Yanashnan Anyo Bichakashiti. This is allegorical, and all commentators have understood this to mean that uh, it describes two birds who are together, two beautiful birds, Suparna, two beautiful birds on a tree branch, together on a tree branch, uh, specifically pipal tree. Uh, one of them is eating the fruit and the other is simply observing the one who is eating the fruit. So all the commentators take this to, they understand it to mean that the, the bird eating the fruit, the, the, <clears throat> the tree is the body. Or the, or the branch is the body and the tree is material existence. And the, the, the bird eating the fruit is the jiva who is eating the fruits or enjoying the activities of this material world and getting the fruit in terms of good and bad karmas. And the other, so that's the Atma, and the Paramatma is simply observing, watching. He doesn't eat the fruit. He's simply simply watching the other. <clears throat> so this corresponds to uh, Lord Krishna's statement in Bhagavad Gita regarding the super soul Paramatma in the heart, Upadrashtanumantacha, within the Within the heart, this is the, the soul and the super soul within the heart of the living being in the material world. So Gita, Krishna says, Upadrashta, he is the secondary seer. The, the jiva is seeing and the super soul is also seeing what he sees. And Anumanta, he allows or enables the jivas to do what they want to do. At the present instance of this name, Parasha Bhatta gives the understanding, uh, continuing with the same theme which he's been discussing in the last few names about how Bhagavan helps the fallen yogis to get back on the path and go on to perfection despite their fall. So he he takes it this name to mean this exactly this and just he's explaining the the last few names in this way from slightly different angles here supana in the sense of to get over par suparna and para means to get over that's still used commonly in english languages to cross so he helps the fallen yogis to get back on track and cross over the ocean of material existence. <clears throat> In this regard, he quotes from Shruti Mola Sanghita, Svaparam Bhagavan Nayati. The Lord helps them to reach the shore. And from Gita, Prayatna Dhyatamanas too, Yogi Sang Shuddha Kil Bishaha, Aneka Janma Sang Siddhas Tato Yati Parangatim. That the yogi goes on trying, <coughs> and eventually you know, he goes on trying to become completely purified from contamination, and eventually it may take many, many births. And then he can go to the supreme abode. He reaches me, Srila Prabhupada says. Uh, Satyadeva Vashishta, as usual, interpreting the names in terms of 
uh, the activities of the Supreme Lord or the uh, influence of the Supreme world, Lord within this material world. Uh, <clears throat> he's the one with the best and beautiful wings. Uh, he's moving around and he enables everything else to move around. Everything in the universe is moving. The sun, the moon, the stars, the living beings. They're moving here and there. Some, well, there are two categories of living beings, chal and achal. The moving, such as the birds and humans and reptiles and insects and fish, and the non-moving, such as most plants are stationary, and then we have some mountains and, and stones that are also living beings. Uh, but another way we're all moving, brahmanda brahmite kona, uh, Ete Brahmanda Bhari Ananta Jiva Gancha Rashi Lakha Jonite Kariye Brahman. We're all traveling from body to body to body. So by his beautiful wings, by his power, he makes everything in the universe move. And that's the very definition of universe. Jagaditi Gachati, that which moves is the universe. Throbbing. Shankaracharya explains this name to mean that... He is the form of the Vedas as the leaves, the allegorical uh, or the allegorical leaves of the tree of material existence. In this regard, Shankaracharya quotes from Bhagavad Gita, the first chapter, the first verse of the fifteenth chapter, Urdva Mulam Adashakam. Ashvatam prahuravyayam chandangsi yasya parnani yastang veda saveda vit. They say, they speak of uh, a, a banyan tree which is reversed, it's upside down, the, the root is up, or it can be taken to mean that by the very nature of a banyan tree, its roots are up. Its roots above and its branches are below. Adashakam. Adashakam. It's an and it's they say it is immutable. It goes on. It just it's it's as if eternal. Its leaves are the Vedas, the chandas of the Vedas, the, the meters of the Vedas. He who knows this tree knows the Vedas. <clears throat> so that's the meaning, that's the purpose of the Vedas then, to know what is material existence and ultimately, of course, to know Krishna. Radha Krishna Shastri uh, elaborates on this, sub commentator on Shankara. Or he takes from Shankara and then goes on to continue his commentaries. He is Suparna because he gives protection to the jivas in this world of birth and death, by giving them shade under the tree of this Ashvata tree, Banyan tree. Shade means the Vedas, anyone who takes shelter of the Vedas, uh, he won't, uh, as long as we're in the material world, we have to suffer, but by following the Vedic directions, immediately, we are relieved from so many difficulties. Uh, <clears throat> Krishna Datta Bharadvaj says that this name means he, Vishnu, who is decorated with beautiful green tulasi leaves. And of course, decoration with tulasi is only for Narayan forms, Vishnu forms. <clears throat> Baladev Vidya Bhushan gives another idea or a similar idea uh, that Krishna, Vishnu, uh, is more pleased with beautiful green tulsi leaves than wearing precious jewels. That's stated in Hari Bhakti Vilas. Baladev Vidya Bhushan cites an account from the Padma Purana. He takes Suparna to mean that he is the one on whom there are tulasi leaves and not gold and jewels. Not gold and jewels. Baladev cites 
The account of Vishnu Das and one King Chola in Padma Purana. They're both devotees of Vishnu and it's described that the King Chola used to worship Lord Vishnu with gold and jewels and Vishnu Das, poor man, worshipped only with Tulsi and water. And the king, he looked down and criticized Vishnu Das for that. If you're going to worship, we can just imagine, if you're going to worship the Lord of all opulence, you, you just can't offer some leaves and water. You have to do better than that. But Vishnu Das attained the favor of Bhagavan Narayana first. Yome Bhaktya Prayachati. <laughs> He's satisfied. He, if leaves are offered to him with love, he accepts that. Uh, as he says in Bhagavad Gita, and one of the commentators, uh, Bharadvaj, gives the interpretation that he's very pleased. Parna means prina, prinane, very pleased. And he is pleased. Prinanam by parnam, by leaves. So he's very pleased and satisfied by this sincere offering of his devotees. Uh, and although he doesn't quote it, we, we can remember the patrang pushpang palang taoyang yome bhakta prayachati tadahang bhakti upahritam ashnami prayatatmanaha. Krishna says, who offers me with love and devotion, He's simply a leaf. A leaf especially means tulasi leaf in Vishnu worship, a bale leaf in Shiva worship, but we're talking of Vishnu. Whoever offers me with love and devotion, a leaf, a flower, fruit, or water, or and water, uh, I will accept that. So Krishna doesn't say, give me gold and jewels and so on. One thing is very striking that the Acharyas in their commentaries, how Vast is their learning. You see here, Baladev Vidya Bhushna is quoting from the uh, <clears throat> Padma Purana and uh, Parasha Bhatta is quoted from Mola Shruti, right, the, from the section of the Vedas. These were days when people, uh, manuscripts were not very easily available. You couldn't look up anything online. You, you, libraries were few and far between. Uh, a few people might have personal libraries, but a lot of it went on by memory. So how learned they are. Uh, another explanation, uh, yeah, this is from commentator Bharadvaj, he's Suparna, he's beautifully green because he's associating with Lakshmi who resides on his chest. She's golden, he's blue, and when you put yellow and blue together, what do you get? So he becomes as if greenish by the association of Lakshmi, very beautiful. Uh, they're all beautiful, but that strikes me as being particularly Beautiful explanation. Another commentator, T.S. Raghavendram, uh, states that <clears throat> uh, he is called Suparna because he is the abode of supreme happiness. Uh, su means Shobhana, Para means Uttama, Na means Ananda. So mixing that Shobhana, very nice. Para, topmost, Uttama. Naha means ananda, bliss. So he is the abode of supreme happiness. In this regard, he follows the uh, another commentary, that of Raghunath Tirtha in the previous occurrence of this name. Another meaning Satya Sandha Tirtha gives. At the time of universal devastation, he in his baby form, lies down on a beautiful green leaf, a fig leaf, fig tree leaf, and he enjoys being tossed here and there 
in the waters of dev devastation. He who, he who pervades the universe entirely, another, um, another interpretation, again, breaking up the Sanskrit in different ways, or understanding it in different ways, he who pervades the earth completely, and of course the earth can mean can be extended to mean the whole universe. And I won't get into discussing that much because there have been many explanations in Vishnu Sahasranama about how he is all-pervading. We've had the name uh, Vyapak, for instance. Vyapi, he's all-pervading. Uh, so that interpretation is already covered under those names. Vanta-kalpa-tarubhya-scharkipa-sindhubhya-evacha-patita-nam-pavane-bhyo-vaishna-vebhyo-namo-namaha-dantene-thaya-chunakam-padayone-patyakrit-vacha-kakushatam-et